You know the old joke about college students and their sleeping habits? Make sure you're awake by the crack of noon? That didn't exactly apply to Ohio State and Notre Dame. Not on Friday, anyway. With an 11 o'clock kickoff, the book Game 6 by Mark Frost tells an interesting story. There was a camera operator behind the green monster who was dealing with some kind of rodent. And while he was trying to shoo the rat or the mouse away, you've probably heard Anderson Township described as Brenneman County. Brenneman County, USA. Five Mile Road, Beachmont Avenue, and as bus trips go, this won't be the biggest gas guzzler of the season, but it is a hike for Anderson on the east side to head all the way out west to meet Harrison. A yes. couple of unbeatens. Maggie Satterwhite plans to throw out the first pitch on senior day for the Comets, and a couple of fellow seniors are going to go to her house this weekend to work on her form, a form she's already been perfecting. Where else? but in the school cafeteria. As scary as that was, as quiet as the gym was at Villanova, Xavier freshman point guard Edmund Sumner doesn't have as much as a concussion, even though he was knocked out cold and spent a few hours on Thursday at a Philadelphia hospital. Here in Washington, D.C., the White House is, of course, where the president and his family lived during his term as commander in chief. And Barack Obama is a big college basketball fan. He, like a lot of us, put together an NCAA tournament bracket. The Phillies left the line score up long after the fans here at Citizens Bank Park had gone home. The Zeros tell the story of a dominant performance by Halliday in one in which he joins Don Larson in the record book with one pick in particular that caught the attention of the Bearcats. UConn over UC in the second round to move on to the Sweet 16. To put into perspective just how far back the great hockey tradition at DU reaches, Leave It to Beaver was a big deal on TV back in 1958 when the Pioneers won their first national championship. Just one last tidbit of information to pass along. Mm -hmm. Our Spanish-speaking friends refer to this guy right here <laughs> as Jorge Vogel. <laughs> so, Jorge. Jorge, I'm going to step out of the way and let you take us home. I'm Zach Wells here in the Black Hole in Oakland, California, maybe the most avid fan following. And it might seem impossible looking at Julian Edelman, New England's wide receiver, to think that coming out of high school, nobody wanted him. For at least another season, January 6th, 1991, will stand in the record book as the last time the Bengals won a playoff game. It is the longest drought in the National Football League. With the Bengals in Houston, Zach Wells for Local 12 Sports. Let's go back to you. At first glance, it looks like a house divided. Two different Catholic schools with their own uniforms and their own goals all on one field. <laughs> yeah. But they stand as one, as human beings. It's awesome to have you know, both the new Cat community, the Cup Cat community come together, these schools, these programs, these football programs. Programs with deep ties to the Eviston family. Cub Cat coach Eddie Eviston played at New Cat back in the day, as did his big brother Brian, one year older and a multi-sport athlete for the Breds in the 1990s. All before the younger Eviston took the helm of the Colonels three years ago. How am I where I am today? How am I, everything I'm blessed with, how? That's how. I was blessed with a brother that made me fight, made me better, someone I could look up to. He raised the bar high each and every time. There's nothing that you can't get through. This past November, a muscle twitch in Brian's arm, along with slurred speech, turned out to be the early signs of ALS, known also as Lou Gehrig's disease, named after the Hall of Famer for the New York Yankees. There is, right now, no cure. He's very brave. He's very brave, and he's very selfless. He's still giving of himself to others, even though he's afflicted with this. And, you know, we're fighting. You, you can choose to throw in the towel and, and not live anymore, but he's living. Hey, fellas, I'd like to thank you for welcoming me into your locker room. Living and teaching. Just nine months since his diagnosis, Eviston wrote a speech into the computer that helps him talk on the scooter that helps him get around, drawing parallels between football and the adversity he now faces as a married father of four, two months shy of his 40th birthday. I have had to make a choice. Although it's not a game of life and death, 
football presents you with the same choice. When you get knocked down, roll an interception. How are you going to respond? And I can promise you that, as long as there is air in my lungs, I will continue to fight. I've yet to hear him complain once, and uh, you know, he's, when everybody's kind of saddened by it, and a little shocked by it, it's kind of funny how everybody kind of looks towards him. The two schools scrimmaged, but one team in green shirts stayed on the sidelines, selling Team Believe t-shirts and rally towels, with just shy of $11,000 going back to the family. You know, Brian Eveston's near and dear to both schools' hearts, and we want to do everything that we can to help support him and his family during this uh, difficult time. Eveston has found inspiration of his own along the way. A few months ago, meeting Steve Gleason, a former NFL player who knows, as does Brian, the struggles of the disease. You know, we said we will fight. You know, that, that, there's a lot of truth to that between me and him. We fought all the time, so um, I know what kind of fight he has in him, and and uh, so you know, it's and he's going to fight this, and, and we know it. He has to fight to live every day, to get out of bed, to get dressed, um, to speak, to eat, to give kisses and hugs, but he does it every day. He doesn't have to, but he does. A choice conveyed to an otherwise silent locker room that erupted in applause. <laughs> Before their guest speaker led them onto the field to start the season.